Hello. Hello, everybody. Welcome to my very dirty apartment. Please don't judge too harshly. Um, but I am currently in my kitchen and I just got back from doing some Christmas shopping and some Koyada shopping for this video. Uh, my hair is very sweaty and greasy. So it is currently in a braid, which is pretty standard for me whenever I'm doing any type of spell work. I tend to put it in a braid. Um, I have fairly thin hair, so there's not much I can do with it. It's either in a messy bun, a ponytail, or a braid. I very rarely, I feel, just let it loose. It tends to end up in some form of ponytail of sorts. So I am in my kitchen. I made a couple adjustments, so hopefully I can show you all what I'm doing. Um, wrong, wrong way. Everything's backwards. So my altar is um, where that um, bear head is. It's on the top there of my bookcase. So you will probably come with me when I go to like actually change it over. Um, but I wanted to show you some of the stuff. Not much changes season to season for my altar, just because a lot of the, um, one of the deities that I work with is the Slavic goddess of winter sickness, death. So it tends to look fairly at least fall-ish, if not wintery. Um, it's also a pretty standard um, altar, a lot of focus on family, and just general witchiness on there. So there's not much to change, um, but I wanted to show you what I will change. But I wanted to start off with the hair potion that I wanted to kind of talk about. Um, so Slavic hair magic is something that I'm getting new to, not something that I've really done much of because I don't really do much with my hair to begin with. Um, like I said, it's fairly thin, pretty flat. Um, so it's not something that I tend to focus on all too much, but I got interested in learning more about it from a podcast, um, which I highly recommend. Let me grab the full name. I think I talked about it in a previous video, but let me get the right name. It's by the same author that did um, one of the books I recommended. So it is Baba Yaga's Magic. And so they did an episode, episode nine on Slavic hair magic. Um, and I got really interested in it um because it wasn't anything that I focused on previously um so uh the podcast is Baba Yaga's Magic by Madame Pamita um same author as Baba Yaga's Magic the book which um I don't think I have with me I think it's actually in my car because I took it to a coffee shop the other day to like work on my uh book of shadows and things like that so I think it's still in my car um but they've done an um, episode about who is the Dumovic or Dumovoy, um, egg magic, ancestral worship, um, Slavic water spirits, um, uh, magic foods in Slavic spirituality, um, hair magic, cloth magic, and the most, most recent episode was episode 11, so it's a fairly new podcast. Um, and it's the magic of the Slavic wood stove. Uh, it's very Ukrainian based because the host is Ukrainian. Um, so, you know, Poland and Ukraine and Russia are often cut times clumped together along with Belarus and some other other countries, because back in the day it was all it was all one. So back when my ancestors would have done this type of magic, it was all all kind of the same thing. Um, only in fairly recent years has it split up into different countries. So I kind of take that, um, some things with a grain of salt in terms of if it's Russian specific or, you know, so I have to do a little bit more research, but I'm also fairly, um, general a lot in my practice. So you will, off, you will see the cats go by. The white one's name is Greta, and then I have a black one named Vlad. So let's get started with my hair potion, because I feel like that's going to be kind of the easiest thing. <laughs> so I got this um, inspiration from that hair magic episode of that 
podcast. And then I started looking into just general hair oils um, because I have been dealing with a lot of stress due to to some family health issues. So my hair has been falling out more so than usual. I also have a chronic illness that we're still trying to identify. Um, Just chronic pain, constantly sick, the hair loss. I've had weight gain. My feet have started swelling. No, I am not pregnant. Um, So been trying to figure all that stuff out. My thyroid is fine. We've tested that. So we're still trying to figure it out. So I, part of the reason why I went out today was because I needed a new mason jar um, because the one that I have been using for my cold brew coffee, the lid is all rusted. um, And so I wanted a fresh one for this. So this is a, I think it's 64 ounces. Of course it doesn't say it on that. Yep. 64 ounces. I got it from Michael's. It was like $7. $7. And I think I had a coupon, so I did not spend that. So I got two of them. So now in total, I have three. So I have my mason jar, which will be will be cleansing with some cedar incense to kind of make it a little bit more Christmassy in a way. Um, and I also really like the smell of cedar more so than, um, what is it, fur? I also have uh, frankincense and myrrh, which are pretty standard around um, this time frame for blessings and things. But I just personally really like cedar or amber. Amber is a really good one, too. I I was up in the air about which one to use, but I was feeling more called to cedar Um, because I can't have a real Yule tree or Christmas tree because of my cats. Um, So I do have, which will be going on my altar, a small fake one. Um, So this is very easy. I This is going to be the first time that I'm making this, so we're kind of going to be learning together, and I won't know if it works because you have to let it sit for like a month to let it fully infuse. So, and then I have um, imported olive oil. I got this from Trader Joe's. Um, I wanted something that was, you know, fairly good quality than what you would use for like cooking and stuff. Like I just have, for cooking, I have mostly avocado oil I'm not really sure why. It's just what I gravitate towards. Um, So I have olive oil. Um, This is 33.8 ounces. Um, So it's not going to fill all of this, but it's going to be packed full with other stuff. So um, I also, in order to kind of come up with this concoction, I use my Master Book of Herbalism by Paul Bayer, Earl, Beryl. Um, so I wanted to check the like metaphysical properties of the ingredients that I'm going to be using. Um, I found these as just mundane hair oils and it works out that these are one, these are ingredients that I use pretty frequently. So rosemary and bay leaves, um, which you can get at your grocery store. Um, I actually ordered the rosemary off Amazon because I wanted a lot of it because I use so much of it just in general. So I needed to replenish it anyway. Um, So I'll be using up the rest of what's in this tin as well. Um, All along my fridge here are these little magnetic containers for my um, seasonings and stuff. And then they're also on top of the fridge. So I'm going to go over just a quick um, overview. I also have a candle going. Um, It's Marshmallow Fireside. Um, I just... I really liked it. I feel like back back then they would have had a fire. So I have my candle going. So let's, I should have grabbed the pages first. Let me find them. All right. It starts on page 51. And then it goes in alphabetical order. So let's see. Let's do bay leaves first because that'll be beginning of the chapter. There we go. Found it. So uh, the lore, and then it has the remedial um, uses for it. So it's pretty small. So I'll just read all of it. Um, so Bay has a history of use in attracting love and good wishes. It holds 
prominence among the Greeks who used it in show of honor of uh, victorious athletes and has a religious herb for the priestesses at Delphi or Delphi, uh, where they chewed them as they proclaimed their insights and visions. This herb has been much used to recognize those who have achieved enlightenment. So it says, apart from cooking in which one bay leaf is uh, adequate to flavor the entire dish, um, there is little internal use for bay, so it doesn't do much if you were to make it into a tea or anything like that. Um, the volatile oil can induce strong reactions for the body in large doses, for it has a strong stimulant and some narcotic properties. Uh, the large doses will be unpleasant, causing increased blood pressure, pulse, and likelihood of vomiting. The berries um, are also potentially dangerous and may induce abortion for an un for an expected mother or pregnant person, um, if we're being inclusive. The berries should be avoided. Primary use of bay medicinally is to employ the oil as a remedy for bruises, damaged muscles, in cases where the skin has not been broken, and a word I've never seen before. Anodyne um, for earache, um, styphoretic, phoretic, um, stimulant, narcotic, eminic, and another medical term that I do not know. So we're going to be using bay leaves because I enjoy the fact I think will be helpful because it's a stimulant that'll probably good for the hair. Um, and also just in terms of... Um, attracting love and good wishes um i think will be good because um the slavs the ancient slavs are even you know more recent their hair is fairly important kind of in a way think of like game of thrones with the dothraki um they would have it long for warriors and then they would cut it in terms of um if they lo were lost in battle and things like that. Um, wild hair, so hair loose, is often a sign of witches um, and tightly bound are more um, for those who... It's classier, I guess, which I don't have another... Another word isn't coming to mind. Um, so I wear... I try to think of putting it in a braid when I do um, magical workings as just like, it's not quite what my ancestors ancestors would have done. They would have loosened it up and things like that. Um, but it just feels right for me to put it in a braid or put it in a ponytail or something. One, because it keeps my hair out of my face. Another, it just, it's almost like a ritual in itself to braid it, which my braids are not very pretty. I it just is what it is. Um, and then the other one, rosemary, which would be further down in the alphabet, H, M, T. Rosemary, here we go. A little bit of a longer, um, uh, entry, but it says for lore, let me rest my hand here. Rosemary is an herb that has lore dated back to the ancients. It's been used in both wedding, weddings and funerals and is a favorite among the gre green herbs. The strong scented volatile or oil has led to rosemary inclusion in many recipes for incense, both among Christians and pagan religions. Remedial, not only is rosemary said to improve the memory, but it is also an ancient herb to take in the event of a headache, even a migraine, it is also soothing to all the nervous system and is used in the stomach in stomach disorders caused by tension. At least one herbalist says that the constituents of the rosemary are most beneficial to the brain, giving vitality and health. There's more. There's more. Um, rosemary tea is highly recommended for those who have trouble falling asleep, particularly when they are bothered with troublesome thoughts. A wash may be may be made of the herb, which is strengthening to the roots of the hair and considered effective in the treatment of dandruff. Most or some take rosemary daily as a tonic for which is good for the heart, uh, toning it and keeping it in a good working order. So it's for the st stomach, uh, stomach tonic, astringent, diaphoretic, nervine, and 
another word I cannot pronounce that starts with an R. So those are going to be the two herbs that we are using today. So from the podcast and my own research, we essentially just fill it um, maybe about halfway of herbs and then we cover it with the olive oil. Um, we shake it a bit to make sure it's fully incorporated and then we store it in a dark, dry place for a couple of weeks. And then we strain it and we can put it in bottles such as uh, this, the little droppers, um, which is what I will probably do because I've been saving up. I have a lot of um, like skin serums and stuff. So I've been saving these bottles. Um, so I'll probably just put them in there and then keep this stored. My cat is going into bags. So let's get started. We're going to first start with uh, cleansing it. I already washed it just with soap and water because I did get it from the store today. And then we are going to take incense. Like I said earlier, I'm going to be using cedar. Greta really wants to get in that bag. I don't know what's in there. I'm actually just going to light it from the candle that I have going. Let that go. Sorry, my hand is shaking. I've had a lot of coffee today. I let it burn just a little bit, make sure it's fully incorporated, blow it out, and then you just put it in there and you let the smoke do its thing. I have weak hands, so I have to kind of double. Um, I just, I can't grip things, which is kind of the first start of that chronic illness I was talking about. Um, I drop things, so we're just going to let it. I'm also thinking good thoughts and just trying to put good energy into it. I keep letting it make sure I turn it upside down so it gets the bottom. And then I'm going to put this into a little incense holder that I have by my sink. Just like there. And then we're going to start with the rosemary because I have a small thing here with dried rosemary. I'm just going to dump all of that in there just so I can use up my oldest stuff first before using up my newest stuff. So what we're going to be doing, or I do, for Colida isn't going to be super involved because um, the solstice is on Wednesday. And then probably Thursday or Friday, I'm going to be heading to visit family for Christmas. Um, we're supposed to be getting a lot of snow, so I'm not sure when I'm going to be leaving. We're supposed to be getting snow here and there. We're supposed to get about uh, 5 to 10 inches here over the course of two days. Um, and then they're supposed to get either snow or rain. It's still kind of up in the air. So I'm putting, um, it looks like I'm just shy of two, two cups. It has it on the side here of the rosemary. I'm gonna try maybe to layer it a little bit so that it can better incorporate. And then have my bay leaves. Again, this is a new one. Um, Pretty much use the rest of my bay leaves uh, during for Thanksgiving holiday for cooking and things. It smells so good. Um, you can also use bay leaves, which is what I typically use them for in my practice. Is um, they're pretty good about like protection and things. So you can write intentions or folks that you want to protect or. Um, things like that, and you can write them on there. And then in a fire safe bowl, you can burn them and put them into your black salt, um, which is what I've done, done in the past. These things are highly flammable. When you light them, they really, really light. So just keep that in mind if you do use them for those purposes in terms of burning them. So um, I have fat fingers, so I'm just grabbing a couple at a time for what I can reach. I'm just going to Again, I am not trying to think any negative thoughts or anything like that. I'm trying to, as I add these, I'm kind of thinking about how I would feel when I use it and what I'm using it for. Um, I'm 
Put a good layer down of the bay leaves. So since we both have we have them both in there, I'm gonna start layering the olive oil. So like I said, I just got this from Trader Joe's. You can get wherever you get olive oil. You just want to make sure it's high quality because you are gonna be like using it on your hair. So we're just gonna pour that in there. And then I'm just gonna kind of pour it in a clockwise rotation because that's bringing in things rather than banishing. If you were to go counterclockwise, that's banishing. Clockwise is bringing it in. So I got a good layer, about half the bottle. So you can watch the, it's all slowly going down. So I just kind of let it sink down to the bottom. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm actually, while it's doing that, I'm just gonna grab a quick drink. Don't mind me. So you can see it's working its way down. Um, it's got some bubbles as it works its way. We are gonna shake it after a little bit, but we're gonna start adding more rosemary and some more bay leaves in there, right on top. that that's the rest probably the rest of the olive oil because i didn't get 64 ounces so it could you probably fit a whole second bottle um but since these 64 mason it, uh, ounce mason jars have a dual purpose for me i make my cold brew coffee in them and the little insert that i have is for a 64 inch bottle I wanted to have a dual use, so totally fine that's not full. Last little bit. There we go. The shake. And now you have this bottle that you can use for other things because we witches love bottles. So gonna put the top on and then we're just gonna give it a little bit of shake. It's not anything super vigorous or anything, just to like incorporate everything. Just back and forth. Just like that. Make sure everything's fully incorporated, mixed together. All right, so that's pretty much it. That, that's it. Now we just let it sit in a cool, dry spot. It's probably going to go up in one of my cabinets over here, probably the one above my sink, for a few weeks. And then just um, shaking it uh, occasionally. And then um, after probably a month or so, um, there was different instructions everywhere I looked, but it said at least a couple of weeks. Then what you would do is you would just strain it, and you would just put it into your bottles as needed. Um, so you can either keep it in this, like I will probably do, and just fill up the small bottles as I go, um, because I only have one or two ready to go at any time. So I'm going to put this in a cool, dry spot. Actually, I probably have more room above my oven, so we're going to put it there. There we go. So that's that. Now I just got to clean up my space. Please don't want to go back into it. There we go. And then we're going to start working on the altar. I still have plenty of my incense left, so I will cleanse the space there. Pretty much the only thing that I'm going to be changing is. So I'm putting a little. Little fake tree, little fake tree. Um, I'm adding a winter gnome, my little um, gomovia, if you will. And then I am using this. It's a table runner. You can get them anywhere. Um, this is a gold um, kind of lacy one. So I'm going to put that underneath everything. Uh, 
probably fold it in half because it's not that long. And then it's just gonna go over, over the top. So I, I'm gonna see if I can bring you a little bit closer because you're on my laptop. Um, I don't have a tripod or anything like that. So let me finish cleaning up my space here. Where could I let's see where we can put you? I'm gonna go for a little walk. Don't mind the dishes and all that good stuff. Let's see. Mm -hmm. I feel like here would be a good spot, but I don't know if I have anything tall on. Here's a thought. This may be a bad idea. I have a lamp right here. Kind of works. You're on the side view, but I can move the lamp. Should have thought about this before I actually hit, you know, live. But here we are. We're we're just doing it. Okay. Just gonna. Whoopsies. Not do that. All right, let's move because this has a bunch of books on it. So we'll move the books. They're all the books that are my witchy to be read. So. Quite heavy. And then I think I have plenty of, okay, hold on to the laptop while I go ahead. Okay. Mm, let's make it go more frontward facing. Be nice if. Oh, wait, I do have a light over here. Hold on. A little bit of light so you can kind of see what's happening here. And then we'll. Scoops this over a little bit more. There you go. See it a little bit better. There's not a light overhead, um, so there's a light in this closet here. So um, I did a, it's on my YouTube, um, an altar tour. So for all of you here, um, pretty much what I got is I have a family photo. In the background, I have three pillar candles currently blue, purple, and black. Um, blue for health. The purple is for um, Marzana. I just felt very pulled to that color for her. And black is for overall protection and also banishing of neg negativity. Got my incense holder. Um, I have a um, skull shot glass for my offerings, which needs to be cleaned. Um, I have a little, I think that's called an abalone shell with a bunch of my crystals, which a lot of them still have the price sticker on them. Um, I honestly don't remember what a lot of these are. So that's kind of my task is to identify them and things. I can kind of guess some of them. Like, I know this is amber. I know that the little, um, where is it? This little guy. This is selenite but that's about it. There's some mag magnetized ones that will probably be easy to identify. So those are there. This is actually working out pretty good because the, the lamp has these shelves on them. So while I, as I take stuff off to clean it, that's where it's all going. And then I have my incense holder, it's a little leaf. Um, and then I need, I need to find another jar to start making my black salt again. I have a mason jar that I can use. So, being careful to not spill that because that's going to be a pain to clean up. Um, I have my resurrection plant, and this is a leaf from my fiddle leaf fig that fell off. Um, Marzana likes dead plants, so this is for her. <laughs> and then this is some kind of agate that I got at a craft store. I just like the look of it. It's turquoise. It's pretty. 
my candles. The bear head is actually for Velis. Um, he is also a Slavic deity, um, specifically known for um, witchcraft, the underworld, and also like farmers and stuff, which I thought was weird. He's also fairly, he's kind of like a Loki character. He's kind of mischievous in a way. Um, and if you go back to one of my um, Sims cast videos, I actually do my like coming of witch story, which he is very much involved. Um, so my family photo from the day that I graduated college. We don't do a lot of family photos that look good, um, but this one came out nice. So I really like it. My dad is funny because he just like pokes his head in at the last minute. I have another bag of crystals. Um, I have a Tree of Life necklace here. I have uh, more <laughs> dead plants that I have put together with a hair clip. Um, these were from a palm plant that I have that have... It doesn't really... That plant doesn't really bring me joy anymore, but it's it it's one of the longest plants that I've had. Like, the one I've had the longest, so I don't want to just, like, get rid of it. So, more dead plants for Marzana. And then this is a little mirrored plate. I think I got it at, like, a Goodwill, a Savers, or something like that. Um, so it's typically where my, like, altar things go. So kind of on here, I have a picture of me and my mom for my grad school graduation. Um... And then my mom, my sister, and I from when we went to Germany right before the pandemic started. So those are on there. Um, my mom has been the one that's been sick. So she is a heavy, heavily influenced on this altar. Um, I also have a figurine of the woman or Venus of Willendorf. Um, she is, she was found in a Germanic cave. Um, it's kind of one of the first known of the area um figuring so we she is typically used on altars for like fertility and things we have an understanding that she is not here for fertility she is here to remind me to love myself as i am and how i look because she is a very voluptuous woman so i think i got her at some museum but and then i have a selenite egg and also a i think these are pronounced Pinskies, Panskies, the um, painted eggs. Um, there is an episode of that Baba Yaga's magic on Ukrainian eggs, but most Slavic nations have something like this, the painted eggs, which is where Easter eggs kind of come from. So, and a selenite egg to have that in there as well. I'm going to put them down here. This second shelf is kind of my altar overstock in a way. <laughs> um, <laughs> where I have like my oracle cards, my goddess cards, um, some wax melts. I collect, um, on occasion, I collect my cat's fur when I brush them for spell work. So I have a jar of that. Um, also on here is a little jar with their, um, their nails. So when they, not when I clip them, um, just when they like naturally lose them and they shed, I Collect them in a little jar for some cat protection because they're my babies. Um, Greta is somebody is the cat that I would think of as my familiar rather than Vlad, who he doesn't care about when I do spell work or anything like that, but Greta is always around. Um, and she's a lot more in tune to my emotions. So I consider her my familiar. And then I have a couple more crystals, um, some amber some smoky quartz, and then I always forget which one is which. I have this guy, um, which might be fool's gold. I don't know. And then this one, which I think is just clear quartz. I can't remember which one is which. <laughs> um, that is gold and should go. And then more crystals. Actually, these don't feel like crystals. I'll have to open this. I don't know what's in here. <laughs> um, a little wooden coaster just to keep the heavy stuff off the mirror because I don't want it to break. Um, so just a wooden coaster. 
these down here. We dropped them. They're fine. They're fine. They're fine. Um, and then I have two figurines up here that I got off Etsy. This is um, Rod, which is kind of like an Odin character for folks who are unfamiliar. He's kind of like the father deity, works with ancestral magic and things like that. So I keep him on there. And then I have um, a, a Domovia or Domovoy figurine as well. It has a little cat on it. So I keep them both up there. Um, just because I, I, even though I don't necessarily work with Rod, he's tends to be pretty present because I do a lot of ancestral work. So I have these guys. And then the bear head for Velis. So I am gonna grab, because this mirror is looking janky. So I'm just gonna grab some essentially Windex and we're just gonna clean it. We're gonna smoke clean it, cleanse it, and then we're gonna start putting the stuff back on. So we'll be right back. Just have some glass cleaner from Target, I think that's the Target brand. But it's pretty, it's pretty big. Pretty false, big, gutsy. So, and then I just have a microfiber cloth. Looks like it also has some like wax bits. It must have. Bits are getting stuck to, <laughs> stuck to the side there. So I might grab a paper towel just to clean it up a bit. Yeah, that's like some candle wax. So we must have done some type of ritual work on it at some point. To be fair, I've kind of used it as like almost a mobile altar. So I put everything on here, and then if I bring it over to the window or something like that. So, um, the bookshelf is like a faux wood, so it has all the like, um, uh, grains and stuff. So it's mostly just gonna need to wipe down just for the dust and stuff. Actually, I have some pledge, so I'm going to use some pledge. Lemon scent. So, just for the the metal bits that are up at the holding everything together. So it's just a little dusty. Last time I did a full cleaning of it was back in end of October, so. Go. There we go, all right. Now we just put everything back. With the addition of essentially my altar cloth and my gnome, so there's still a tag on there, so that's gonna be put in the back. Looks like half is gonna be fine. Might have to stick out a little bit, just a little. Just like that. Mirrored plate. I think I'm gonna put it in the middle this time, so that way I can fit the tree in the back there along with gnome it's got the little weights in the bottom so it's just gonna it's been in storage up until now so we're just gonna get it there and then let's do candles let's put the candles back 
I'm also kind of wiping them down just a little bit because they're also a little bit dusty. Um, again, didn't take the tag off, so making sure the tag is in the back. And I think I'm going to do the candles along this edge this time. Um, actually, I think I'm going to put the health candle in the front. Stickers on both sides. There we go. Cool. Our Marzana candle. And on the back. Actually, it's kind of going into a curve there. It's just kind of how what's happening. Um, dust off my my family photo. And that's probably gonna go right in the back behind the mirror or altar piece. Late. So it's right there in the front. And then we just put everything back that was on the plate. So our selenite egg. Actually, I think I'm going to put the selenite egg next to the family photo. Yeah. And then we're going to put the painted egg on the other side. Kind of just, it doesn't have a stand, so it's just kind of leaning, leaning there. And then wipe that off. Little coaster right in the center, I think. Actually, no, we're not going to do that, actually. We have to change the light. We're going to just put things. The heavy crystals will just go on the side. Kind of have things a little bit balanced. So like one crystal on that side, another crystal on that side. Our figures, we're gonna put it in the front. Mm -hmm. I think I think these have served us well. So going to be disposing of these because. We have this. Which, where is this gonna go? Oh, oh. Might not be able to fit everything. Okay, so that crystal will move the gnome over a little bit. Hang up the crystals in the bag again where it was. A little family photos, but so they can stand up just in between things. Big thing of crystals that can go in the middle, and then where. Nails. I'm actually going to move the selenite egg because it's getting hidden now. For that's over here next to the painted egg. And then I think this is good for now. I still have some things that were left over, but I think it's going to go on the. Um, actually, I'm going to switch out. I'm actually going to put. So, this nesting doll I got in Prague when I was there with my family. I actually ended up getting a tattoo on my arm, kind of based off of her. So I think I'm going to put her in the back where I initially had the selenite egg over by the tree. I'm going to pack her right there. Can't really see her, but I know she's there. And then when I do on actual Colida, I'm going to have a shot glass of something. Don't know yet. So I think that's all I wanted to do. Um, but yeah, that's how I'm prepping for Koyuda and my altar changeover. I'll, um, when I upload this onto YouTube, I'll add some like better quality photos so you can actually see it. Um, and yeah, if you're interested in seeing any more kind of witchy content, please let me know. Witchy content is likely going to show up on my YouTube rather than my Sims content. So I'm going to leave that here. Um, so if you're interested, I also did add on a Tumblr. Um, 
I just started Tumblr. I did. I wasn't even into Tumblr when Tumblr was big in the mid 2000s um, or in the 2010s, but I got it now. <laughs> so um, I made a post about my witchy to be read list. Um, I'll probably put like book reviews on there, altar stuff. Um, so yeah, if you're interested in those, it's all under the same username. It's me, Rachel3. Um, you can find me on YouTube, here on Twitch. Um, I'm on TikTok. I don't show a bunch, all that much stuff for witchy content. Um, Tumblr um, and Twitter, if you're interested. Um, I don't post much on Twitter, especially now. But um, if you are interested, it's there. But that's all that I got today. So um, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. Okay. Thanks so much, Fence.